All right, hey guys. So for the decision-making activity, I decided to cut Sandra and Bob. And starting with Sandra, the reason that I decided to cut her in terms of the confirming evidence was that her job performance is low. And, you know, she's not young or new either, which, you know, if she was young and just started the company, then you'd have to look at it differently because she might just be growing. But she's 45 years old and has been with the company with eight years. So she's most likely hit her max in terms of her, uh, what she can provide to the company in terms of leadership and work ethic. And, you know, in other words, her work on um, overall job performance isn't going to improve. Um, and also her job performance was in the poor category. And in addition, she makes a third highest salary in the company of $49,000, which is more than Michael, Justin, and Jay, who are all under the job classification of excellent. But one thing you have to take into account when cutting Sandra is that in terms of status quo, you have to accept criticism for firing someone who's a single mother to three children, um, especially because a lot of the other people in the company are either single or divorced. So that's something you need to keep in mind with this. But getting to the next person with Bob, uh, the confirming evidence for cutting Bob would be that it, it really doesn't have to apply with him. His job performance is good. He's a, He makes the second lowest salary in the company, but it, it goes back to the status quo of uh, Sandra and um, the criticism for firing someone who's single or divorced because we wanted to look into um, cutting people who are under the average or poor job description. But the problem is everyone except Sandra and one other person we'll get to later is that the all of them who are in the average category these people are referring to, they um, they are either single or divorced. And you know, if you cut two people in a row, you might be sending the message to your company is like, hey, if you're single or divorced, we don't like you. Um, and a lot of people, those other people you didn't cut might want to leave the company, which would not be good. Um, and then getting to the one example of who wasn't, uh, Amy fell under the job skill of average, and she's married, has no kids, but she's only been with the company for one year. So it wouldn't really make sense to fire someone, or sorry, not fire, um, cut someone who just started with a company because you don't really know what she's um, going to be providing the company yet because it's too early in the process. Um, but the reason he decided to go with Bob because his job performance is good, but he's the oldest in company at 55 years old. And if you are going to cut someone, you want to do it on your own terms. You want to know when they're leaving so you can uh, prepare for um, what you're going to receive from them leaving and what um, you're going to have to replace with their performance that's going to be leaving. But Bob, but if anyone's going to leave the company, which would be bad because you can't prepare for that, it's going to be Bob because the old is 55 years old. Um, but overall, when cutting these two people, the there's good and bad. The good thing is that you're keeping the longer tenured workers and you're keeping the workers with the excellent job skill level which um, will obviously help maintain the overall work efficiency and you're gonna keep your core uh, work principles together because you're gonna be keeping the leadership. Uh, the cons, which is um, one of them, which the first one would be, you're gonna be cutting someone who's uh, single with three children, which you're gonna receive criticism for, even if you're only firing or cutting one of them. But the other one which was kind of interesting was that you know, when you're cutting these two people, you're going to be saving $87,000 annually. So you'd think you're saving money by doing this. But actually, when you're cutting these two people, there's an argument that you could be losing money long term. Because before this happens, the average pay per employee is $49,600. But after this happens, the average pay is going to go up to $51,125,000, which you know, you might think that, okay, if you're saving $87,000 every year, that doesn't really matter. But you also have to take into account that the company is probably not going to be making as much money by losing two employees because you're going to be um, losing tasks that can be accomplished. And also, the only reason this probably happened was that the company was probably losing money related to another reason. So short term, you're going to be getting a bunch of money, which hopefully you can address this problem. But it creates a narrow window because long term you're going to be increasing your paid employees by two thousand dollars every year which might not sound like a lot of money but you have to take that into account when um 
you're giving raises to employees, bringing in new employees, um, giving bonuses to employees, working on the improvement of the facilities, your own pay. So it's just balancing the two. But overall, it's a good move for the company because, like I said, you keep the intact work ethic and leadership components of the company without singling out a single demographic of people that could lead to issues. And, you know, like I said, with the comms, you have a short window with getting $87,000 a year annually to fix potential issues in the company. Um, but long term, it's going to be a problem because you have to pay employees slightly more money per year.